Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolathes at Dawn. I am your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this exhibition match stream is going to be started off with North Chilean G versus Exploit on Fairyland, which looks familiar. I feel like I've done this before or something like it, but anyway, North Chilean G going for the Cloakybot Factory and Exploit going for Gunships. Yeah, I don't know if it was... It was Exploit on this factory. I can't remember exactly why. That was odd. Why did my camera just shift? Weird. Anyhow, so as I was saying, Exploit was going for, I think, Shield bot. It was, I think Shield versus Shield, and then Exploit went and did a bunch of harassment. Now Exploit's going for what looks like a Blastwing rush, but hasn't actually rushed with them yet. Just getting a Wasp. But what is. Oh. I was playing earlier. Anyway, North Chilean G. We'll have to deal with Ban okay, Blastwing Banshee. That's the that's the whole thing we're going for here. That's the strategy. While North Chilean G is gonna be just going for pure glaive. They're standard. That's standard. You know, you go for a few raiders, just set up, figure out what your opponent's up to, maybe stake out a few places, and then from there, well, then that's where the problem comes in. However, we also have a gremlin coming in, which is surprisingly not as good of a choice as it may sound. Exploit, I don't know if they became aware of that. Blastwings. Blastwing Vision and whether or not Exploit was paying attention is the question, but I think Exploit might know. At any rate, I don't know if Exploit cares. I think what they care about right now is their aggression. They want to get in, they want to deal damage, they want to have all that stuff dealt with, because that's basically how they're going to win. While at this point, North Chilean G, just keeping an eye on what's going on, does see the Wasp, doesn't see any other defenses. Actually, right now, oh, if it weren't for that... Were it not for that defender, the Gremlin could go... Actually, oh, wait... Are they going to go for it? Yes, they are. North Trillian G, go right and going for it. Nicely done, getting that wasp. And it looks like the gremlin is on hold position, so it's not going to be doing anything too silly. I don't think it's on hold fire, though. Oh, it is! Hey, how about that? Oh, it doesn't really matter, though. The exploit must find that gremlin. And once again, finds the creeps. Keeps finding the gremlin, keeps overshooting it, and keeps giving it a chance to cloak up. But now it looks like it's well and truly... Wow, Exploit's actually doing a pretty good job of keeping track of where North, North Chilean G's gremlin would be. I'm pretty impressed. It's like the two are just following each other, or, well, Exploit's just following North Chilean G. Especially as North Chilean G was moving that gremlin around, trying to hide it. Exploit pretty much was following it the entire time. Very impressive, but at this point, North Chilean G's real army is the Glaives. I don't see any Rapiers coming in here, so I don't really know what's going to work for Exploit, if anything. The Blast Wings will help. They might thin out the Glaives, especially if North Chilean G is not keeping them spaced out. But the Banshees, on the other hand, that's a bit iffy. It kind of could go either way, but it's really a matter of numbers, and this many Glaives should be fine. No Warriors coming up, though. A lot of Gremlins are coming up. Defenders are also up, which... Defenders are the best bet against Banshees. They really are. Yeah, yeah, see, this is what I mean. I mean, the Glaives are doing a pretty good job. And on top of that, of course, the Gremlins. Because the Gremlins are dedicated anti-air. That's what they do. So what is Exploit up to now? Switching over to Shieldbot Factory. So we do have the ground switch. It hits the Shieldbot Factory. And it's going to be pretty effective, I think. I mean... At this point, lots of glaives, so we're probably going to... Lots of gla gra Well, a few gremlins, lots of glaives. I think we're going to be seeing... Well, probably... Oh, Roach. Yeah, there we go. I was about to say, I think we're going to be seeing probably a lot of bandits, of course. But Roach is a really good idea, given all the glaives, given the massive units, given the fact that we're going to be seeing a lot of raiders, most likely, rather than a lot of riots, skirmishers, other heavier units. It's going to be a really good idea to have some roaches just around the map, just to make sure if glaives try to get around, they die. Horribly. So, that being said, it's going to be pretty much a matter of whether or not Exploit's able to get up an army on the ground quickly enough that's able to deal with North Chilean G's. Because while I do agree with the Roach as a pretty decent idea, North Chilean G is not going for the straight assault. They're going for the stakeouts. They're trying to figure out... Well, they're trying to set up a line as well. But they're more concerned about making sure that Exploit can't do much. They're trying to contain Exploit, keep Exploit from getting around. They're not really trying to attack Exploit that directly. So... Exploit does have a bit of a chance to build up an army, but at the same time, the Roach isn't going to be that useful when it comes to trying to deal with groups. Not right now. If the Glaives do group up, then obviously the Roach will be of some use. But at this point, that's not the case. And the first, 
first time Northstone GC with exploits doing on the ground, and the bandits do have the numerical advantage, at least locally. North Chilean G continuing to go for the Glaives. There's not really much reason not to at this point. If North Chilean G is confident in their counter micro, then it should be fine. And at this point, this is where a Roach would have been really nice to have with these bandits. Because now the Glaives are all built, they're all bunched up. Now North Chilean G knows that Exploit has a legitimate ground threat and is going to be dealing with it as best as possible. We've seen that before that Exploit does have pretty good micro, but at this point, North Chilean G just has the numbers. So the Roach not going down over here, surprisingly not going down to where the Glaze are likely to attack. Still waiting in the main base. This is really risky. If it goes off right now, it would destroy most of North Exploit's reserve army right now. And all the, oh man, if that Roach had gone down beforehand. It's going up, and I'm pretty sure the North Chilean G saw it. And is moving back. Wise move. Good move, North Chilean G. That's what you want to do. And Exploit going for the counterattack. Able to do a bit of harassment damage over the north, but not able to do anything to the main base. North Chilean G just getting a lot of metal to eat, and that's... that, yeah, 170 metal. Pretty much for free. And yeah, North Chilean G totally saw this roach. Like, that's... that's what I mean. Exploit... Exploit loves their roaches, but the one thing about roaches, a bit of an attentional cost, is that you need to put them in position beforehand. You need to put them in a place that your opponent will likely send their units before those units get there. Otherwise, they'll see it and run away. Why would they bother going on top of a suicide bomb? Like, why would they walk on a landmine intentionally? That's not how landmines work. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a World War II documentary. I've also never seen a World War II documentary where you have people just laying mines. Just randomly laying mines. They're walking in and laying mines. While the enemy's there. They get shot. Same with roaches. I wonder if I should watch some World War II documentaries. Anyhow, with North Chilean G right now, I mean, this is actually, I think, in kind of an exploit's favor, just due to the way that the bandits are shaped. Like, the bandits can easily surround the glaives. Right now, North Chilean G is actually in a good position where they can turn this around because their glaives are getting in a line. But no, exploit keeping their glaives, sorry, keeping their bandits less bunched up than North Chilean G. North Chilean G was basically having this big bunch of glaives and just surround that and they're dead. I mean, that's the problem. An exploit, however, about to get surrounded themselves, not working with... Not really trying to work with Lanchester Square Law here, or rather, assuming Lanchester Square Law is more powerful than it is, Lanchester Square Law only applies if all of the units can hit at once. And in 0k, with Raiders, they can't shoot through each other, so Lanchester Square Law usually doesn't apply. Usually, you basically are working off of the Linear Law. It's like melee units, except with a bit of range. But... They aren't able to shoot through each other, so they don't quite work the same way as you'd expect ranged units to work. So to that end, those bandits really just needed to be in a better position. Either If either player had gone in a wide line with those units, they'd just gone in a line, or maybe a couple lines or surround of some kind, around those units, they would have won that engagement. Because the other player wouldn't have had all of their units brought to bear at once. That's why I always talk about line move. Always, always, always. Line move is awesome. And a Black Dawn coming in from Exploit. I wasn't even paying attention to Exploit's constructions. At this point, Exploit's actually idle. They do have a Rogue, but they are idle. North Chilean G was accessing Metal a fair bit too earlier from Reclaim. They really need more energy. And Exploit, however, accessing both. A little bit problematic there, because mainly they aren't building anything. They could. They could easily use up all these resources, but for some reason they weren't. Don't know why. At any rate, Exploit does have map control, pretty much. The Black Dawn is also going to be helping out to harass the main base, get rid of a few things in here. Should do a bit of damage, might actually be able to get rid of all these Glaives, which would be nice. But, I don't know, I think that at this point what we're going to see is Exploit just trying to contain just contain North Chilean G, keep map control. That's really what Exploit needs to do right now. They don't have quite the economic advantage, but they do have a good positional advantage. They can retake this metal extractor set over to the southeast of their base. They can also take the ones in the center. I mean, at this point, Exploit has decent map control. It's just that they're not really using it at this point. And yeah, Exploit has a Geo. Exploit's got loads of energy. The only reason they were accessing at all is because they weren't building. And now they're building again, so the excess is gone. And North Chilean G, they are just getting hammered. I mean, Exploit continuing to just attack and attack and attack, despite the fact that Reclaim might be dropped down. 
Exploit doesn't care. I guess they realize North Chilean G doesn't have enough of an economy to really fight back. And there we go. There's the line move actually panning out somewhat. I say that as Exploit obviously is point moving, but it worked out anyway. I mean, it was a line at first. So at this point, Exploit's got a lot of forces. Like, there's... See, 19 bandits compared to 16 glaives. So at this point, the bandits... One and a half times cost in terms of bandits. There are a couple of warriors... Four warriors, actually. Two in the front lines and another two in the back. That will help. That'll help even out the forces. But we already saw that Exploit was going for rogues. And Exploit can just continue to go for rogues. They just... They can just focus on rogues, not even bother with bandits anymore, or just keep a few bandits in reserve for harassment. But yeah, if they're worried about the, the warriors, not the glaives, but the warriors, they can deal with the warriors with rogues. No problems. And now they know. And we should be seeing the rogues move forward with everything else. Yeah, well, a couple rogue outlaw pairs, not quite enough. Nice, though, actually pulling North Chilean G's glaives away, because North Chilean G is not keeping their glaives and warriors together. That does allow the bandits to get a few pot shots off. And once again, the glaive is getting in front. This is actually something I was playing earlier today that screwed me over. I didn't let... Like, I had fleas, I was using for distractions, and a bunch of venoms and redbacks, and they did not move together, and that was a bad idea. Because the fleas were meant to be a distraction to cover for the other types of units. At any rate... Exploit able to deal with this, and North Chilean G still aggravating. Neither player, really, aggravatingly not line moving. I mean, we just saw three glaives die to a Rocco because they were not spread out. Seriously, spreading out makes a huge difference. You can do a lot by trying to avoid splash damage. And you can also effectively get more of a Lanchester Square Law type arrangement if you do line move. Actually, one thing that I like to do sometimes, although it's a bit hard to really pull off, is kind of a staggered formation. Like, it's kind of hard to do quickly. Oh, or actually, no, it's like this. This is what I like to do. This is how you do it. You do a bit of a U-shape, and then that gets you a staggered formation. And it keeps the units relatively close, but they also... And for large groups of units, it's especially useful. But it keeps them close while keeping them from getting in each other's firing lines. But they're a bit more tightly... In case you need to deal with choke points, they're a bit more tightly clumped up together than they would be in a pure line. So if you're dealing with splash damage, hell no. But if you're dealing with raider versus raider in close quarters, I think it would be a decent idea. But kind of tricky to pull off. You basically have to do that and then hold control alt and use that to continue moving them along. What is it? Ah, I can't do this with someone else's units. Never mind. It's control alt shift, but yeah. That's how you keep a formation while moving. Anyway, doesn't really matter. Exploit is... They're about to get one last hit in. Or rather, they're about to get hit one last time. They're gonna also get one last hit in, because once this big assault comes in... I mean, all the bandits... Oh, man. The bandits may not be doing so hot, actually. Black Dawn had to retreat again. And... Roach is over to the north, not doing a whole lot! We actually don't see a whole lot of death, except for the death of a lot of Exploit's units. Those Roaches did not do their job. I was trying to figure out what was going on to the south, and it looks like the south side has been cleared out. So North Chilean G going for one last shot. Exploit should probably win this. Oh, nice! There we go. That's a well-placed roach. I mean, it did run in, but it worked nonetheless. It got value. And another roach coming in. Once again, exploit. Roaches, unless they're in transports, you do not run roaches in. Which, you're playing gun sh You're playing with gunships. Build a Valkyrie. Build a Valkyrie. Throw it out there. There's a widget that should be by default on now that shows you where it's going to throw down. Like, you just, as you move the transport, there's a little targeting icon on the ground that shows up that tells you where the roach would go if it landed. If you threw it right now, if you were to unload it right now and it flung out of the transport, where would it land? And a bit of the splash rage. That's what you, or not all of it though, but the really, really high damage splash range. That's actually in there. Shaman wrote that a little while ago. Really good thing to have. I haven't personally used it much myself because I don't tend to roach bomb, but for people who do, it's a really cool thing to have. Anyhow, North Chilean G, after losing that one shot, that one last final battle, this is basically it. Exploit going in for cleanup. North Chilean G with a bit of a last ditch defensive effort. A Stardust, another couple Stardusts. I think that's about it. There's, I mean, a lot of defenders. A couple Stardusts. 
And that's gonna be nowhere near as useful as it needs to be. These rogues coming in back here will take care of the Stardust, no problem. The only thing that's gonna screw up Exploit right now is whether or not their units go in in a poor order. Like, if the rogues get caught out by the glaives, and then the bandits, not especially the outlaws, more so the bandits, run into the, actually both of them really, run into the Stardust without pulling back. But it looks like no, Exploit will be fine. And Tick coming in here, not able to do a whole lot. Outlaws pretty much counter Roaches and Ticks, just due to the whole slow, like the, on top of the fact that it deals slow, Ticks and Roaches don't have a huge amount of health, so the Outlaws usually kill them. I mean, it's what, even 20, okay, maybe a bunch of Outlaws will. But yeah, this, this is what I mean. Even with the Outlaws moving forward and getting a couple of them killed, doesn't really matter. And over here, another attack from North Chilean G, trying their hardest. The Roach is kind of getting in the way. I mean, at this point, Exploit is using so many Roaches. Exploit is using so many Roaches that I'm not even sure it's worth keeping track a lot of the time. I mean, normally the Roaches is just one trap, but Exploit's using them like mainline combat units, throwing them into combat and having them explode. It's really an awkward style. And there's the tick going off thanks to the Outlaw stunning out all of North Chilean G's units, and that will finish the job. Tick going against North Chilean G there. And another, wow, another roach? See what I mean? It just keeps throwing roaches in. More and more roaches to the north, but honestly, that's not the important thing. The important thing is whether or not North Chilean G could even push this set of units back. Like, if they can get exploits rogues back, that may not even be enough. How many roaches are coming in here? Yeah, there's one, no, there's none over here. There's just roaches constantly. And Orphelia is throwing themselves, both, Orphelia is pointing exploit. I cannot speak today. I am sorry. Let's try that again, shall we? Orphelia is pointing out that Exploit is a goblin because they love explosions. Making an oblique Warcraft 2 reference. But yeah. That's... That's pretty much how Exploit's using them. Just running them in and blowing them up. At least I think that was meant to be a reference to the goblin sappers of Warcraft 2. And how was... How are these Rockers getting hit? Like, their range, they outrange these Stardusts. So yeah, Exploit not actually quite able to finish the job. Really? I mean, at this point, Exploit has such a massive economic advantage, I seriously thought it was going to be a big deal. Once the Crow gets up, that'll be done. And all the frontline forces, I mean, all of North Chilean G's assault forces are dead. Like, they're gone. They're, there's nothing left. I just realized there's a nice volumetric fog effect. I hadn't even noticed that. That's cool. Anyhow, I don't know why I didn't notice that. I love that kind of effect. Regardless, I know, I'm getting I'm getting distracted because what is there to talk about? North Chilean G basically is, they're just being cleaned up at this point. Exploit, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do to screw this up? Especially once the crow gets out and another roach. What is that? Is that a roach? That was three roaches, actually. They were all in a group at one point, and that was just three roaches. Running, the running into the commander and getting hit by a riot cannon and blowing up. That's what happened. And it didn't really matter because the commander's... Even if, even if the commander doesn't die... Actually, maybe I shouldn't be so hasty. North Chilean G is dealing a bit of damage. The crow... The crow being built up, that used a lot of resources, which obviously are not being used for ground-based units. Now, at this point, Exploit is going straight back to the ground army, so they'll be fine. But North Chilean G... I mean, if they really play it right, they might have a snowball's chance in hell of getting out of here. I hate to be so unhyped, but really, it's just... This crow is basically about to tear apart North Chilean G's commander, and then run into the base and blow that up too. And North Chilean G realizes this, throws in the towel, exploit takes the game. Like... I mean, that was pretty well played overall. There was nothing really hugely wrong, other than the lack of line move. I think that was the thing that in both ca both players... Their units were not really working well. They were getting into clumps, and that was causing them to die too easily. But yeah, I mean, going for the little backup rogues right at the start that Exploit did, that was a really good call. And North Chilean G, and then good harassment on their part at the start. I just feel like with North Chilean G, they ended up losing a lot of... Well, they didn't... They had the initiative on anti-air, but they kind of lost some of their initiative knowing that the anti-air was coming in and then not switching out. I don't know, it's hard to really call it. That one's... That one's just tough. I mean, they had the unit composition to deal with the rogues and outlaws. Actually, maybe not outlaws. They didn't have Rockos. That was the one thing they were kind of missing. 
But yeah, obviously, against shield bots, especially outlaw based shield bots, cloakies just use lose ticks. And then you have the roaches that are constantly barraging. Even if they're dying, they're still occasionally getting some kills in. Constantly barraging everything. And Exploit just mainly had the map advantage. I think the one thing North Chilean G might have been able to do is maybe try to find if there were any naked expansions, but that at this point, they were so pressured. I don't blame them for not going out and scouting that out, because they were so pressured. They actually were pushing out trying to find what was there, but they were mostly at this point focusing on Exploit's army. Or at that point in the game. The Metal XS, North Chilean, wow! Exploit did excess a little bit, but mostly North Chilean G XS 2000 or so. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I didn't even notice this. Wow, really? The entire game? Yeah, most of the game, Exploit had an economic advantage. There was a tiny little portion right about here where North Chilean G had one out. That was around the 20-ish mark. Yeah, I remember that bit. But otherwise, Exploit was always at the advantage. Oh, right, right, yeah. North Chilean G, they had the economy problems with energy. That was the thing. They were always too low in energy. And then that just snowballed. That's the real big problem. I'm actually kind of surprised, given how many units were built. It's just... Yeah. Like, unit value compared to unit kills. North Chilean G was apparently relatively efficient. All things considered. Not that efficient, but still, compared to the unit value. Oh well, anyway, that's... Oh yeah, right, you can't really compare there. So yeah, units lost, units killed was about the same. Exploit had a small advantage. But I almost feel like if North Chilean G had not gotten their energy completely stalled, if they had not e-stalled, they probably would have been able to take the game or at least have a much easier time holding onto the map and not letting Exploit get a massive economic advantage and then turn that into three wins at once. Anyway, that was that game. The next one is going to be between Capricious and Clone on Lonely Oasis, which should be really exciting. I'm excited for that one. Hope you guys are too. So we'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.